Guys, check this out. The 2018 Mercedes AMG GT Roadster. This is the press briefing from beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. like this, we will not hand over our GT Roadster and GTC Roadster because our goal is maximum driving pleasure with firm ground under the wheels, which you have already been experiencing today. My topic now is the technology that guarantees precisely that. Let's take a brief look at what has happened until September 2014. In September 2014, we presented the Mercedes AMG GT in Affalterbach as our second in-house developed vehicle. And since that day, full-blooded sport, this full-blooded sports car has been thrilling auto enthusiasts all around the world with its combination of sportiness and suitability for daily use. What's more, it combines maximum driving pleasure with another positive trait, great variety. We now have a steadily growing GT family with now at the moment seven individual members. We have the GT, we have the GTS, the GTC2, and our street legal racer, the GTR. As you can see here, we have the full blooded GT3 race car and the topic of today, our new two roadsters. Because they make for a truly impressive family photo, we have arranged a family reunion in our exhibition upstairs. You can see all the cars as a model car for some interesting pictures. And you will surely notice a covered model, which we have uh, already previewed in Geneva last month. And this also, sorry. One thing is for sure, with the GT we brought a big uh, breath of fresh air to the segment, quite in literally in place of the roadstock. Its style-defining feature is its three-layer soft, uh, uh, soft top fabric, and it opens and closes at speeds up to 50 km per hour in as little as about 11 seconds at the touch of a button. Much less than half time, just four seconds to be exact, is how long it takes to accelerate the AMG GT Roadster from zero to 100, courtesy of our four liter V8 by Toro engine. It has become even more powerful since the presentation of the GT. We added uh, 14 additional horsepower, so we have got in total 476 now and we increased the torque about 30 Newton to 630 Newton meters. All other vehicle components are also designed for absolutely driving performance. Examples for this are the AMG SpeedShift 7G dual clutch transmission, which has an automatic rev matching function in the sportier driving modes. The AMG Sport Suspension or AMG Ride Control Sport Suspension with adaptive damping and the mechanical limited slip uh, rear differential which gives you optimum traction when accelerating out of curves. On the Mercedes GTC Roadster, we stepped up uh, our game even further in every respect, starting with the engine. 
The output of this completely new variant is between the GTS and our street legal racer GTR. In figures, uh, we have added an additional 81 uh, horses um, to a total of 557, to be exact. We also packed an additional 50 newton meters on top, on top, which is already on tap at 1,900 rounds per minute. And 0 to 100 is a matter of uh, just 3.7 seconds. And, whatever, and wherever it's possible and permitted, you can accelerate the GTC up to uh, 316 kilometers per hour. Um, then we adopted the standard, um, the standard air panel active air control system from the GTR in these cars. We have got 14 uh, cooling air louvers in the lower front skirt that automatically open and close in less than one second as needed. The, closes, uh, the closing louvers, um, they lower the aerodynamic drag during normal driving in order to uh, reduce the aerodynamic uh, resistance and uh, guide the air control to the underbody. And the open louvers let in more cooling, when, uh, more cooling air when higher temperatures uh, needs more cooling to uh, have a good function. The kinship with the GTR is also evident in quite a number of other technical specifications that both vehicles share. The three most notable ones are the first one, the rear wings, that has been increased by 57 millimeters to give us more space to a wider track at the rear axle. The second one is the electronically controlled limited slip rear differential. And third, we have a standard active rear wheel steering. Up to a speed of 100 km per hour, the rear wheels are turned in the opposite direction of the front wheels. This gives us a um, um, virtually shorter wheelbase, which is, uh, gives us more agility in turns and requires less steering efforts. At speed higher than 100 km per hour, the system turns the rear wheels in the same direction as the front wheels, and this gives us more driving stability and the driver will notice the better grip and higher level of stability during fast directional changes. Excuse me? Yeah. How many degrees can that? 1.5, up to 1.5. Oh, I'm sorry. 1.5, <coughs> yeah. The AMG Ride Control Sports Suspension is also standard on the GTC, as is the AMG Performance Exhaust System with <coughs> actively controlled exhaust flaps. I'm sure you have heard this feature today. Our optional AMG ceramic high performance compound braking system provide us maximum braking power. So ladies and gentlemen, that about sums up the technical highlights of our new GT Roadster models. And when we talk about the unique AMG driving experience, it's not just pure technology we are concerned about, it's also the emotional component. And the latter is in particular ensured by the design, which my colleague Vitalis may now present to you. Thank you so much, Axel. Well, I'm over here, uh, <laughs> because we're gonna go in a minute outside. Uh, well, designing by beauty, we had a very, very clear vision of what our roadster should look like. First of all, it had perfectly to fit in our GT family. And second, even more important, it had to be pure. Pure, it's styling, meaning there's no useless elements on this, this car. It's pure roadster. And secondary, it's the um, uh, design elements that have to be functional. So every design element is functional, meaning like an aerodynamic re uh, way. So you spent quite a while today with this car, but I'd like still to invite you to have another look at this car with a little sunset so, to see the shape even better. <coughs> So I would like to start on the front. So I would like to everybody to come on the front where the first thing is happening. Because this is the fascia of the car and the face is the first expression. This is where you get the eye contact. And we wanted to make this car a lot more different, more aggressive. So what did we do? We introduced again the Panamericana shape. So it's first of all, it's the graphics. It's the graphic, it's the A shape, which you already know. But what does this aid support by the LED lights? 
on the side. And what does this A-shape do? It puts the car really on the ground because it makes it wider. Before you had this V-shape, now you have all turned around. So it puts it really on the ground. It really puts it on its wheels. And it's been supported by the A-wing, which is floating. That gives me the possibility to have this black element in there to make it visually even wider. So I have this really aggressive mouth. Talking about the front view, this panoramic integral is positive, so it's supported by this element, a chrome element, which show really the positive shape. What does it do on the side? On the side, like a normal Rosso or GT, it has really short overhangs, but the nose is now longer, so we're having a shark nose to in the side view to have this aggressive feeling. But the overhang stays still very, very short. Now going to the side, what it makes this car really strong, you have a high belt line, and what you don't see here, you don't see the body, body color. So basically you see only the body side. So for that reason the car looks even lower. So it looks really strong and low. And strong means you have this uh, muscle, which uh, Axel just said is 57 mils wider, so we're using this muscle to really to show off where the power is coming from. And that muscle, I'm going to take now to the rear. It's wider, and we're using this to, for the air outlet. So it's really, really wide. It's graphically it's supporting the car. It makes it strong and aggressive. But at the same time, I'm guiding the air here. So it's aerodynamically in the perfect situation. Yes, it looks very strong and wide and aggressive, but we kept it really clean. So on the top, there's no useless element. So no antennas whatsoever, it's all introduced in the booklet. So it's really, really clean. So what does our car make a roadster? And the roadster for me or us is a very high belt line and a very re uh, low rear. So it's a, a strength from the body side, muscle, and a very, very low rear. And this is where I'm going to invite you to look at the interior. You can see the very high quality material and the very high end uh, craftsmanship. And what you can see here is that our AMG performance seat, which for the road stays even better because you have a very low seating position and with a high belt line, you really feel like a proper, proper roadster which is now with an AMG performance steering wheel in front of you. And what you have here, you have this uh, light macchiato beige um, lever, which you can support perfectly with a beige um, soft top, red and black. And this is what makes our car, in my point of view, a really proper roadster. Thank you very much. And I'm going to head over to Birgit again. explanations from Axel and after the design sky, what should I say now? Just so bring you down to earth and talk about tomorrow, for example. Um, what is awaiting you tomorrow? We'll have tomorrow for you a full suite of the 43s. And just to recap, AMG, our portfolio is based on three pillars. First of all, we have the <coughs> full blooded sports cars, like here. We have the 63s, our performance cars, like for example, the E63 or the C63. And then we have the 43s. Those cars that give people really an entry to the AMG brand, like access to driving performance from AMG. Um, that's what you're going to drive tomorrow, after experience with the roadsters today. You will see that they have the same jeans, actually, the same <coughs> AMG jeans. Um, we'll have the full, well, a full range of cars there, from SUV to the roadster to the SLC, for example. Take the car we haven't driven yet, please. Make your choice for in the morning. We will have the test cars ready from 9 o'clock in the morning, um, and breakfast will be served from 8 o'clock onwards in the morning on the roof terrace where you have already been uh, today. Um, other than that, you can leave your luggage in the hotel. Please hand over to our staff, and they will bring it then to the relay station, to your final closing station. That's where you will have lunch in the Olive and Ivy restaurant tomorrow. In between, there's a, like a coffee stop at a lake, a nice sea lake, Squirrel Lake. Can have a photo, nice photos there, and of course swap drivers. And that's all from my side. You will have our experts with us the entire night, and uh, enjoy and have a nice evening. Thank you.
Check this out, the 2018 Mercedes AMG Roadster. Somebody had a question about the um, aerodynamics and um, inlets. Yes, they're all functional. Um, there are intercoolers down here. Uh, of course, there is uh, the main radiator down here, but there's also underbody um, air inlets that can close or open and also modify the airflow around the car. And for the GTC model, which is the highest performance model, of course you have more power, 550 horsepower in American. And um, look at this beautiful interior, guys. Really thick Alcantara steering wheel. And um, really nice leathers. Of course, the center console that's very high, very tall center console. And uh, this one is black. Of course, uh, of course, you have carbon ceramic brakes. And pricing hasn't been completely finalized for this car. It goes on sale in late summer, early fall of 2017, the Roadster version. And pricing will start about $160,000. And of course, you can option the car further. And um, there is some vents in the hood as well for venting some heat. And this is basically a front mid-engine car because the, if you look at the front axle here and draw a line here, the engine is actually behind the front axle. So that makes for a really good weight distribution. And uh, there are a lot of people here really interested about the car. These are journalists. This is our first driving event in Scottsdale, Arizona. And um, the engine is a four liter twin turbo uh, in the GTC, which is the highest performance version. It produces 550 horsepower. The base GT has uh, 469 horsepower. So it's a big jump for this twin turbo V8. And yes, it's real wheel drive. And this car, of course, also has active steering in the rear adaptive suspension using magnetic dampers uh, the tires are continental sport contacts on this car and you have many wheel options as well so you can do the polished look you can do blacked out wheels or you can have kind of combination of both and uh, it does have air scarf basically uh, outlets in the seats that provide cooling <clears throat> and uh, overall this is I think um, the looks of the overall the proportions of the car in my opinion are really really strong it's when you see it on the road it truly is looks very low and planted and um, we drove it today, we drove actually quite a lot. We drove from Phoenix to Sedona and back. And I can tell you, because the embargo had lifted on driving impressions, that the GTC especially is a very cool experience. Uh, the exhaust sounds great. You can, you can change um, sort of the exhaust, the loudness, the loudness of the exhaust system. And uh, there are valves in there. And uh, the engine sounds great. And the, there's a race mode on the GTC Roadster that just sort of wakes the car up. Um, the steering uh, stiffens, the suspension stiffens, and the um, transmission just bangs, shifts like no other. And it's a very quick, very quick, and very fun car to drive. The balance of it is beautiful. Um, handling balance and um, yeah it's hard to afford a car like this of course for most of us since the roadster starts at about 160,000 um, final pricing is not final yet but the coupes are already on sale so you can get a AMG GT coupe and then the GTS coupe already and uh, 
Yes, it's still front mid engine. Um, there are a lot of people here, so I cannot quite open the hood right this minute. But there's actually a model of the engine behind me. I can show you the model of the engine. And you could see the air intakes are here in the front. And the engine actually starts right here. And this is where the axle of the car is. So most of the engine is actually behind the front axle. And of course, this engine is very flexible. I mean, to produce you know upwards of 550 horsepower from a four-liter turbo V8, um, that's quite a lot of power. So thanks guys, we're also going to produce an edited video for this where I spent uh, some time um, doing video of the car on the road um, in a beautiful area around Sedona and also interviewing these guys, the experts, to tell you all the, all the details about the car. So that video will be published to TFL Car YouTube channel probably within a couple days. Um, I don't know about all the options guys, but... Um, this is the chief designer so thank you guys um, coming to you from Scottsdale Arizona this is Andre signing off and saying thank you for joining this is in Scottsdale Arizona